Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be featuring a ship that has been requested a fair bit lately. The Daring, the Royal Navy Tier 10 Destroyer. Now, first of all, I am testing some new rendering settings as well as some graphic settings, trying to improve the video quality as much as possible. Feel free to leave your feedback on what you feel about the quality. This is a full tier 10 game, which some fairly nasty opposition, namely double Z-52s, a Harugumo, a Venezia especially, and a full division or multiple divisions on the enemy team. So this, I'm expecting this to be a pretty tough fight. As for the water, it's a modded, uh, it's a modded water. It's called, I think, Calm Water Mod or something. The idea is to make the water look a bit different than normally. Mostly I'm doing this because uh, it doesn't really offer any sort of competitive advantage, but it changes the visuals a bit. And honestly, I've been playing this game for four years and I feel like changing it up a bit because I actually quite like the way the water looks with this Calm Water mod. Uh, I'll probably be changing away from it at some point, but for now, it's quite enjoyable. Also, we are going, f we are very, very close to reaching that 100k followers on Twitch. We're like at 97.4k followers, so we're literally 2,600 followers away from 100,000, which means a huge potential giveaway. So, if you can be ours to drop a follow, I would greatly appreciate it. Moving on, I don't want to push straight into a cap because on this cap in particular, people tend to often push this flank as you can see quite right here. And the daring pushing straight into a cap, especially with double Z-52, is generally not a bad, uh, not a good idea. And with multiple radars, it's not a good idea either. Especially since I have a Des Moines that will probably anchor behind the island and contest the cap. And I have a Z-52 going this way as well. So I am much better served playing on this flank, providing spotting for my team and having them focus fire these cruisers and making sure that no DD is flanking my team instead of wasting my time um, trying to sit inside the cap and doing what the Des Moines does significantly better. At this point, I'm popping a quick smoke to get some harassment. And this is of course one of the greatest strengths of the Daring. And one of the reasons why I selected this commentary in particular. Daring is a monstrous fire starter. Daring's HE spam is brutally nasty. In fact, it is uh, the best fire starter of all tier 10 DDs. Yes, I d I'm not exaggerating when I say all. It's better than um, Marceau. In fact, the only one that even comes close is um, the Haruguma, provided, I think, if you're not running IFHE. Only then can the Haruguma compete with the fire starting chance of this thing. I am, of course, running IFHE as well, so ultimately you end up being fairly even when it comes to Haruguma uh, in fire starting capacity. So obviously, you want to be using these guns as much as possible. Z-52 pushes up, I see that he's using uh, Hydro, but I also have uh, cruisers nearby, so there's a high chance they're probably radaring. So I'm just going to be taking this fight. Note that AP on a broadside like this in the Daring is actually very, very effective, but at this point I'm using HE because I want to be breaking his engine. And HE, in, at least in my experience, tends to have a better success chance when it comes to breaking modules like guns and engine and starting fires well starting fires of course but in general the module breaking capacity of he tends to be superior to ap and that was the reason why i was using it there because that said 52 slowed down and he was caught in a radar so my goal was obviously to keep him slowed down keep him caught in that radar because look behind me on the minimap you can see i got a henry and a kremlin and a des moines i got all this support and i want to make use of that support i want my team to be able to support me there Popping another quick smoke to start a fire in the Yamato, but he's reversing out, so I don't want to waste any more time. I want to get quickly into the camp and support my DD, hopefully kill the enemy DD as well as securing the objective. The Yamato fires look like they're running out, so obviously it's time to start even more fires. You will find this a very recurring theme in this game. In fact, if you look at my damage, you notice that I'm, well, we're almost at 80,000 damage already, and we're only five minutes into the game. And I haven't landed a single torpedo yet. And this is why I chose this commentary, because this commentary is a good example of just how strong the daring is as a pure gunboat. The torpedoes, don't get me wrong, the torpedoes are good, they're 10km range, they're quite stealthy, you can single launch them, they have a lot of strengths to them. And they prevent people from just YOLO rushing you because you have the threat of using them. But you don't need them 
And that's what makes the Daring so brutally powerful, is the fact that you can utilize the guns alone and be this huge threat on the map against every type of ship. The ships, you also have the AP, which you will be seeing something more of later. The AP DPM is quite monstrous. And more importantly, the Daring has improved AP angles. So there are often times when, especially if I think it is, that using, if it, for example, is a straight up one versus one, and it's not about breaking the other ship's modules or setting fires to keep him spotted or anything like that, it's just a straight up one versus one DPM fight, using AP on the Daring will boost your damage. And with the improved pen angles and the short fuse, you will almost outtrade pretty much every single other DD in the game. It is very, very potent. Trying to get some fires on the sailor, as I'm just about to go behind the island, so there's no reason not to start some quick fires. Another thing that I haven't really talked about is, of course, Daring Smokes. The Daring Smokes synergizes so very well with the rest of the ship. Mostly because the Daring Smokes have a uniquely short cooldown. With the full build, I think you can get the smoke cooldown down to something like 63.2 seconds. Now the smoke bloom time is only 10 seconds, so you need to stop very quickly after popping the smoke. And the smoke only lasts for 40 seconds. But that's not really that big of an issue, because the cooldown is so short that you can do these kind of hit and run uh, type of tactics. In fact, hit and run is the name of the game when it comes to daring gunboating. This is not like a Harugumo, where you sit in, smoke, sit in a smoke for a minute and just farm, 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 farm. Or something like a Kleber, where you sail, or Kaba, where you sail around a map and you constantly farm, farm, farm. No, Daring's farming style is fairly different in a sense that it has a very hit and run type of gameplay to it. You push up, you find an optimal position, you smoke, you farm for that 40 seconds that you can farm that your smoke lasts, and then you kind of weigh again, and then you find your next position for your next smoke, you smoke up, and you farm again. And you kind of leapfrog between these smokes, and you find the best possible opportunity to be useful for your team and provide support. Of course, you want to be using the torpedoes, and there's no reason not to, you have 6 game concealment, but this smoke is what really allows the daring to shine. It's also one of the reasons why the Daring, even without defensive AA, and being, of course, very vulnerable to rocket planes, like pr pretty much all DDs these days, AA has been nerfed to that extent. Um, even with carries and game, the Daring is actually very, very good against them, because you see rocket planes come in, so it's not a big deal to use a smoke for the rocket planes. On a, on a Gearing, using a smoke, losing one of your three smokes, that's a pretty big sacrifice, uh, and it really stings, because you're going to be several minutes without smoke, but on a Daring, it's like, yeah, whatever. I'll smoke up. I, it cost me one of my six smokes, but I'll have another smoke ready basically in less than a minute after I leave this current one. Or if you sit in the smoke and use the opportunity to farm a bit, well, no big deal either. Another example. I saw the Montana. I drop my drops, I pop a smoke, and we do more of what I just spoke of earlier. Quick hit and run. Of course, I'm hoping my torpedoes will get some good hits in case it decides to push in. I might get a couple of hits, but ultimately, the torpedoes should never really be your goal when playing the Daring. You you can line them up, you try to might, of course, you should always try to get the best possible torpedoes that you can. But if you don't get any torpedo hits, Daring is one of the few hybrid ships where it's not that big of a deal. In this case, we get a pretty unfortunate spread. He happens to turn in in such a way that he ends up eating only one torpedo. It is a flooding. Will it force his damage gone? It looks like he does, in fact, damage gone. My smoke is about to run out again. We leapfrog to the next one. You can see my next smoke will be available in 25 seconds at this point. So we kind of weigh a bit. Let's see if he's, if he's potentially shooting someone else. No one else is really focused firing him. I'm looking for any potential threats. Is the Henry pushing around? No? Well, then we're gonna farm him some more. Because why not? We start farming him straight away. Our smoke isn't ready yet, but in case someone targets us, we smoke up. And before anyone can actually shoot us, before the Montana can turn his guns and actually shoot us, we're in a smoke and we're farming again. And this is what makes the Daring so incredibly oppressive. This constant leapfrogging, this moving from smoke to smoke to smoke and just being that nuisance. Note that you also, of course, have Hydro, which means you're very rough to actually try to torpedo in the smoke. Not only do you sit very short times in the smoke, but you're also very hard to actually kill in it. And on top of it, you also have three heals, which means, well, depending on the build, of course, but you have heals, which also give you additional sustain. 
And it's the daring as a ship is very, very oppressive to deal with. And I think it absolutely is one of the strongest destroyers in the game. It is brutally powerful, and learning to use this leapfrogging tactic, this strategy to utilize it, is what will truly unlock its potential. It doesn't play the same way as the gearing, it doesn't play the same way as the Shimakaze. They have, it puts significantly more emphasis on the guns and especially the synergy between the consumables and the guns. Because make no mistake, if you try to open water gunboat in this thing, you become a very easy target. The Daring is, I think, the slowest tier 10 destroyer. Um, you can quote me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it had something like, well, let me double check this. 36.75 speed, that's with the speed flag, and that's the speed I'm doing right, well, I'm accelerating to right now. And no other ship even gets close to this. Um, the rest of them either have speed flags and speed boosts that give them a several knot advantage. Even something like a Holland, the upcoming ships, they do 40 knots. Uh, Haruguma does over 40. Hayate, well, Hayate isn't here yet. Yuyang does over 40. Uh, Sommers does 43. There's really no competition. This thing is by far the most sluggish one. Even the gearing does 41 with speed flag. And, well, if you're running speed boost. Another example. Taking pot shots. I'm checking to see in case the Salem pushes around the island. The Thunderer, of course, had EP loaded because he was fighting cruisers. If it seems like he's about to load some HE, which there's a potential that he might now, well, that's when it's time to smoke up to make sure the follow-up volley isn't too brutal. When you have a smoke available at will, you get to dictate the engagements. He's giving broadside, and this is, of course, where I'm showing you the AP. The AP DPM on this ship is very strong. And if you do get broadsides, there's no reason not to use it. Especially if you have already started fires, like I have on this Thunder. Just pouring AP on him is brutally effective. It's a good way to just chip away his health. And it doesn't matter what ship it is, AP will always be effective. You aim for that up... You want your shells to land roughly where the upper belt and the deck armor meets. That's where you want your shells to land. You get arms on the upper belt, and you get arms on the superstructure. And in general, the shells you land are strong. Salem, he's radar us, so there's no reason not to gun both. This is what I mean though, this is a Salem shooting us, and he has no issues whatsoever of landing the shells. But he is heading towards an island, so we keep moving sideways. In this case, we could sail away and leave the radar, but I am intentionally staying within his radar range. The reason for this is, I actually want him to turn out, I want him to chase me, because if he does, then he'll push right into my torpedoes. So I'm kind of baiting him a bit to see, and perhaps, maybe, he will try to turn in. But, after grounding, he plays it very, very safe, and he will be dodging my torpedoes. The, she the game is a 4 versus 4. I'm a bit worried at this point that the Z-52 might be going to cap A, and... There is a Shimakaza pushing down south. So, one thing that the Daring does very well is kill enemy DDs, especially the likes of Shimakaza. Always having smoke available, huge DPM, Hydro, health advantage. Um, Shimakaza doesn't really have a shot. In this case, I'm keeping an eye on the minimap because I want to know if one of these radar cruisers next to me decide to radar. I request support. Let's see if one of them listens. One of them says Wilco. He pings the incoming Venezia as well. I pop my Hydro, and he actually pops his Radar in response. And this is a really good move from the Des Moines, and this gives me plenty of time to pop my Smoke and slow down. And this Shimakaza is now caught in the Des Moines Radar while being under fire from me. This is a situation where loading AP would be good, but he actually damage cons the engine. And he's angling away, so I'll just stick to HE. I know I'm going to melt him very, very quickly, and that's exactly what happens. He gets killed, and thanks to the Hydra, the torpedoes are spotted a mile away, and there's absolutely no chance of the Shimakaza killing me. At this point, we've finally run out of our consumables, well, most of them, and there's only five minutes remaining, and the game is basically decided. This is usually... Games rarely last this long these days. I feel the games are such steamrolls nowadays that having a game last this long is kind of uncommon. Salem looks like he is accelerating out. There is actually still a chance of losing because Salem and Venezia combined might be able to take down my Stalingrad very quickly. 
Uh, Venezia has the broadside of the Stalingrad and with the Salem harassing from here, I am actually a bit worried. The Z52, I expect him to go to A. So even though I have no smokes or anything, at this point I'm just looking to distract and delay the Salem. Ideally, by shooting AP, the DPM forces him to turn in towards me and maybe eat some of my torpedoes. Or alternatively, at least it'll make him turn his guns away from the Stalingrad and give my teammates some more time to disengage. Salem turns his gun for, guns for me, so I instantly angle away, and at this point it's time to stop shooting, because my torpedoes won't be landing, so I won't be getting the kill, and taking these kind of open water trades in a slow, sluggish destroyer like the Daring is a really poor idea. I check the Stalingrad health, it looks fine, he will be surviving, I don't need to do anything else except survive, and this game will quite quickly turn into a win. I damage Conde Fire to go dark, the Z-52 finally enters A, he actually delayed it so much that there wasn't really too much of a risk losing. He should have been there a lot sooner. At this point, Stalingrad is taking a lot of pressure from both of them, but thanks to my distraction and the fact that he understood to just flee, they do not manage to turn this game around at this point. And the game ends. The important thing, and the reason of course why I selected this game, is 206,000 damage. Yet, when we look at uh, the actual inflicted damage, or the means of inflicted damage, we see 684 shell hits and only one single torpedo. One torpedo, one flooding. That was all the damage we did with our torpedoes. And we still got a confederate, and we still got a high caliber, and we still inflicted a significant amount of damage. In fact, if we look at the team score, 2,800, perhaps not quite as monstrous as some of the games people have seen on my streams with the Daring lately, but I really like this game in particular, because whereas the other ones have been quite hybrid focused, this one is almost purely gunboat focused, almost purely gunpower focused. In fact, uh, looking at the detailed report, that's when you really see it. Almost 100,000 HE damage, about 37k AP, that varies, you can get more. Torpedo damage, 12,300, and a flooding that did 1,000. So combined about a bit more than 13k of the damage we dealt was torpedoes, and over 190,000 of the damage in a 16-minute game was purely from gun power. And this is why Daring is so good. Because even if you have games like this, where you just don't seem to get an opportunity to get any torps, and when you do get torps, you just don't land any of them. Even when you have games like this, that combination of those fast acting smokes and that sheer firepower means that it's actually, if you play it well, it's rare to have really, really poor games in the daring. It is really that good. There are situations, of course, where you will get caught, I mean, like you get radar and then you force out a smoke and then carrier planes come in. There, of course, if a carrier is involved, the game always becomes iffier for a destroyer. But that is destroyer life. That is not unique to the daring. Daring is probably one of the best suited DDs in the current meta because AA has been nerfed. So the best way to deal with carrier is avoidance. And Avoidance and survivability, and Daring has that in abundance with the fast-acting smokes and those fast-acting heals as well. Well, not fast-acting, but several of them. Anyway, since people keep requesting this on my stream, and one of the reasons why I'm actually making this commentary, let me show you guys my recommended Daring build. As always, I will start with the modules. Consumable-wise, the priority number one is of course damage con, followed by smoke, followed by heal, followed by hydro, in that order. Actually, I have two um, heals with this build, uh, you will find out soon because I don't run superintendent. Upgrade-wise, turret and torpedo survival. Hydro duration, if you have it. If you don't have it, then just run propulsion mod for engine survival because you're slow enough as it is, you don't need to be losing your engine either. But if you do have the Hydro, you already have a long duration Hydro, this emphasizes it even more. AF Guns Mod 1, which of course improves the amount of flak you throw out. Note that in the upcoming patch, this thing will be nerfed so hard that it's gonna be hard to even justify using it on basically any ship. Um, we'll see how they finish fine-tuning it, but preemptively, once they change this, what they're doing is they're changing this to a priority sector cooldown boost. So instead of improving your flak, it actually reduces the cooldown of priority sector, which 
isn't really that useful. We'll see if they change the values. Uh, remains to be seen. As for now, though, just run the AA Guns Mod 1. Upgrade-wise, rudder shift because you can't run acceleration, which I normally run on DDs. Concealment and, of course, faster reload on the guns. As you saw from that commentary, the daring is all about that duck gun. Captain build-wise, priority target. I really love this ability, especially on the daring. Last stand, survivability expert and concealment expert, ideally in that order. After that, in which order you take this is kind of up to you. IFHE, note that IFHE is extremely useful on the daring because unlike the lightning, it has 113 millimeter guns and 113 divided by six means that you actually have less than 90 millimeters of pen. Uh, and this means that you can't pen other DDs, which means your HE shatters on them, which forces you to use AP on enemy DDs. Now this is fine against the average player, but if you do end up facing a good player, that just angles nose in, or for example, a Shimakaza that just sails directly away and just uses his back guns, um, he will straight up out trade you. So, IFHE as a first perk after those 10 points, as a 14 point perk, is a pretty solid investment. Follow it up with BFT, your guns are your bread and butter. Finally, last two points into Adrenaline Rush. You can get Adrenaline Rush before BFT. I personally like BFT first though, because uh, AR only really kicks in at the same level as BFT once you go below half health. On the other hand, it does also boost your torpedo reload. Ultimately, you want to end up with this build though. Flag-wise, obviously, you do want to run the two fire chance flags. You absolutely need a speed boost because this thing is painfully slow at 36.8. Heal flag, if you can uh, well, he'll flag it. There's not any reason not to use it. And of course, detonation, because DDs tend to detonate a fair bit. And finally, of course, you do want to be running November Foxtrot, which means faster cooldowns on your consumables. Uh, worth, worth noting, I just realized uh, as I was making this vid, I realized that in the vid, I was in fact not running, or in the game earlier, I was not running the November Foxtrot, so I had like a 70 second cooldown on the smokes. Of course, if you do run an improved captain, um, you do get 10% jack of all trades buff potentially, and uh, you can combine that with this November Foxtrot to get that consumable that cooldown down to 63 seconds, as I mentioned. But if you run this build and just a November Foxtrot, it's going to be 66 and a half, which is still a very fast reloading smoke. Overall though, heal flag, obviously, AA. I mean, it does help. It doesn't help a lot, but every little bit help. Detonation flags, oh, we're running out of those. Anyway, that is my daring build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, if you can be honest dropping me a sub on YouTube, I will appreciate it. And if you can be honest helping me reach that 100k on Twitch, I will appreciate that also. Especially, And you will probably appreciate it yourself once I'm able to do that huge 100k giveaway. Thank you very much and have a fantastic evening, my dudes.